Whew. Well, here we are somehow. We're in the week one. I know. The appetizer was delicious. The appetizer was indeed delicious. But now we move on to the main entree. The dessert. College football. It's back, baby. It's back in full force. Let me tell you about this week zero real quick. You know, um, let's start in Ireland. That game, Notre Dame, Navy. Um, to be completely honest with you, I'm think I thought, you know, Navy's new wrinkles were going to be, you know, them going to the shotgun a lot more like they did in the Army Navy game last year, you know, at the end, you know, the final game of Kenny Niamatololo's tenure, I thought they were going to go more shotgun heavy with their spread option attack, but instead, instead they, they still used the flex bone, they still, you know, they, they were able to run a little bit, but they just couldn't run well enough, it was just, it was just not enough. You know, they tried to split back. They tried to power T, and I thought it looked like the wishbone at first. They tried, of course, you know, the shotgun. Nothing worked. Less than 130 yards rushing. And against Sam Hartman, I mean, he did very well. Really, the offensive line, Audrick Estime, you know, just they were on another level in this game. You know, defense, of course, as well, stopping the flex zone for the most part in this game. Yeah, there were moments where it felt like Navy was going to be able to do something, but at the end of it all, Notre Dame easily took care of business. I mean, Navy only scored three points, uh, you know. So it is what it is there. Um, Caleb Williams, what, what else can you say about Caleb Williams that hasn't been said already? I mean... Four touchdowns, very solid. Defense is still the problem, though. 28 points. You have, you know, we have a dual threat quarterback from, from San Jose State running on you. You know, also San Jose State had a plus 100-yard running back rusher. So, I mean, it, it, it was rough. But, yeah, I mean, USC has enough firepower to, you know, obviously keep San Jose State off their backs. You know, they doubled up 56-28. And then there were some surprises like Jason Brown, the Virginia Tech transfer, coming into Jackson State, coming into Hot Atlanta, you know, against South Carolina State. And Buddy Pugh's leaving, which I didn't find out until the day of the game. I didn't find that out, but Jackson State demolished South Carolina State 37-7. UMass really won a game. It was crazy. Crazy how they won that game against New Mexico State. Um, FCS kickoff, you know, there, there was also, you know, there was also some lightning and stuff like that. Some lightning kind of got in the way of things. It was I don't know how, but, you know, it. I think it affected um, – I know it affected the FCS kickoff. It affected Vanderbilt, Hawaii, which that was fun. I didn't put that in here. But, yeah, that Vanderbilt, Hawaii game was pretty fun. San Jose, San Jose State, you know, is interesting. But San Diego State, not going to be fun. Um, they knocked out Ohio's quarterback, Rourke. Held the Bobcats to only 13 points. I mean, it was a rough, rough game for the Bobcats. 20 to 13, San Diego State. Um, again, Hawaii lost to Vanderbilt 35 28, in which Hawaii uh, brought back the run and shoot yet again, which is interesting. And then, of course, the CUSA really, how we all kind of wondered how this conference was going to go, but you realize several things. Rich Rods, Jacksonville State team is just undersized. I don't know how they beat UTEP, but they beat them. And then Florida International, Louisiana Tech was rough. I mean, Hank Bachmeyer, I swear he's been in school for like 88 years. FIU only had four passing yards the entire game. Just four. Your guess is as good as mine as to why. 
They only had four passing yards. So it was a rough go at it. So now the feast begins. And notice that there isn't any thing for Friday because nobody put any ranked games for Friday. There's no ranked games on Friday. There's still some interesting games like Louisville, Georgia Tech on Friday. But it all gets really good underway. And notice I made this instead of trying to, you know, get, you know, the whole ESPN the graphics and stuff like that. So I just kind of made this myself here. So you have Florida against number 14, Utah. That'll be on ESPN. And then the smorgasbord of games. Oh, my goodness. On Saturday. And although the slate doesn't look as appetizing, there's, there's definitely some things in here. You know, obviously, most of the FCS games – just cross those out as 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 W's for teams like Ole Miss, um, Port um, Oregon. You know Notre Dame is easily going to beat their first FCS opponent. Yeah, it's Eddie George and Tennessee State. They're going to easily beat them. Kansas State as well. Georgia, you know, um, and yeah, that's that's it. But everything else, everything else is looking interesting in some form or fashion. So. You know, uh, I have a lot of things to talk about here. There's a lot of things to talk about before I go over, go back and go over each individual matchup. You have Kate Marinara sauce, Kate McManera. You know, will he start? He had an injury to his leg. Will he start? Jim Harbaugh, he got suspended for a couple games. It was supposed to be for. I think it's still before, but he got some things together for those first couple weeks of the season. We'll see how that kind of works itself out um, with the whole with the whole Mason Garcia being the starter for Michigan now. Um, Carson Beck has been named the starter. I know Georgia's going to play both quarterbacks. I think is Drew are, are those two guys the real deal? We'll find out throughout the season. You know, yeah, you know. again, what, what can Carson Beck do to impress in the opener? I think I meant to put Kyle McCord there. Look at Kyle – is Kyle McCord the real deal? Not Carson Beck is going to play for Georgia probably all season long, but I'm talking about Kyle McCord in regards to, you know, are they is he the real deal? Because, again – Ohio State has bucket loads of talent around this man. It's just up to him to get it together. You know, uh, Florida, they've got Graham Burtz now. We don't know if Camp Rising will be ready in time. So Utah, Utah's still favored in this game. I don't know why. Uh, but Florida has Graham Mertz. That's, that's, the, that's the issue here. Graham Mertz is terrible. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. That man cannot play football very well. You know, and it should be a treat on Saturday night between Drake May, Spencer Rattler. Going to be a treat. You know, Sunday, of course, Brian Kelly's Tigers, really good defense. You know, they got to find a way to stop Jordan Travis and all the speed and all those guys that Florida State has brought back and brought into the fold. And then, you know, of course you wonder, is Dion's Colorado team going to put up a decent fight against TCU? TCU's got a lot of things changing after their playoff appearance this past season. But, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see. Uh, some of the other games I want to talk about, you know, real quick. Uh, the game in Nashville between Virginia and Tennessee it's going to be Joe Milton's time to shine against Tony Musket, the mom of transfer for the Cavaliers. I, 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 I genuinely don't know what Virginia is going to do. Tennessee's favored by 28. Uh, again, Colorado. Now, they're a 21-point underdog to TCU for some reason, which is crazy. So, you know, Shadur Sanders, Travis Hunter, they're going to have to do something in this game. Um you know, Brent Venables, you got to get Oklahoma on track. Again, McManera for Iowa. 
We'll see what happens with Iowa. Um, Cooper Legas is still the quarterback for the Aggies. And, you know, he can cook up something. He may have lost, you know, some guys. But uh, Utah State ain't no slouch. Um, you know, yes, Kyle McCord is going to be the guy for Ohio State. But Devin Brown will also take a look in this game against Indiana, who is a 29 and a half point underdog. Crazy. Then you have JT Daniels at Rice going up against Texas. I know. Crazy stuff, right? I know. But, I mean, it, it's Rice. Come on now. <laughs> you all know the story of Texas playing Rice. So, you know, and, and, I mean, there's just so much, so much, you know, about, you know, these games. You know, Washington, Boise State, that's actually a under-the-radar type game. You know, Michael Penix and company are going to have to find a way to, you know, keep Boise State, who, again, is still favored to be, you know, one of the teams in the group of five race for that, um, for the um, automatic group of five bid to a major bowl game, at least. We'll see what kind of trap Boise State lays for Washington and, and you know, Wisconsin air raid now with Luke Fickle. And Tanner Mordecai, I don't know how that's going to go. I mean, my goodness, I, I don't know. I don't know. Again, will USC cover the spread against Nevada? I don't know. Uh, I mean, that. I mean, Nevada's got some guys. They got some good transfers. I'll say that much. And then Connor Wegman is going to be at Texas A&M now as the quarterback, but. What kind of offense is Texas A&M going to cook up against New Mexico? What kind of offense are they going to cook up? Alabama, again, multiple quarterbacks are going to be played. We don't we don't really know right now what Alabama situation is. Again, what I thought and what I'm thinking is run heavy Alabama 2010 to like 2015 Alabama. That's what we're getting this year from Alabama. And then, of course, you know, Drew Allard. Again, I don't know what's going to happen because this is a make or break it season for Neil Brown. Because West Virginia, quite honestly, is just a bad team. You know, they were bad last year. I don't know what in the world they're going to look like this year. But, I mean, you look at the spread 20 and a half in favor of Penn State. I mean, my goodness, man. And then, of course, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina, going to be a good one. Gonna be a real good one. Um, don't forget about Tulane, though. I mean, I mean that that game against South Alabama is gonna be definitely an under the radar type game. That's gonna be a fun one for fans of those two teams. It's gonna be a real fun one. That's a that's a really interesting game right there. Too bad, you know, it's gonna be overcrowded by. Uh, it's going to be overcrowded by, you know, the, the debut of the Big Ten on NBC. And speaking of, you know, Big Ten, Big Ten's on CBS, Big Ten's on NBC now. I mean, no ESPN, you know, ESPN's doing their own things with college football this year. That's just insane. You know, of course, you have the Pat McAfee stuff. You have college football games being shown in theaters. I mean, it's just a wild time. For ESPN, just do what you need to do, which is show the games, you know, make 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 the things look good, and then show the games. You, know, you ain't got to move the FCS championship to a Sunday. You ain't got to do that for NFL pregame coverage. That's going to be two hours of nothing. But what do I know? What do I know? I'm not a programming executive, you know. And then of course the Sunday games again. DJ Udilagale, you know, in Oregon State. Again, San Jose State is no slouch. Definitely will be a tougher game for Oregon State than USC, I think, you know. 
And then, of course, you know, LSU, Florida State, the big one. Jay Daniels, Jordan Travis. They're going to have a duel. They are going to have a duel out in Orlando. You know, they're, they're going to have a duel out there. And Clemson Duke, which is surprising. Surprising to be that, that Monday night, you know, late game. But Dabo and his crew have got to get on it this year. You know, I left out a lot of storylines in here, but I wanted to kind of, you know, talk about them as we move down the list of the top 25 teams and everything like that and the games for this week. So, you know, we start on Thursday. We end on Monday night. What else can you do? Five straight days of college football. It's going to be really, really good. Cannot wait. I mean, I, I, I'm just salivate just thinking about it. We're just two days away from that. Two long nights. And that's not even counting some of these other games. Again, again, there are some other games that I definitely think are worth talking about, like Nebraska, Minnesota, um, mostly because of Matt Rule. Uh, again, Army's new option offense, which is going to be from – the shotgun for the most part, but still with some under center, you know, against UL Monroe, um, the rest of the Sun Belt. Again, like I said in my season preview, Sun Belt is going to be that conference this year, I think. I really think it's going to be the conference that we need to be keeping our eyes on. I mean, man, man, oh, man. You know, Northwestern. With basically no coach due to hazing allegations right now, going up against Rutgers in a Sunday game on CBS. I mean, we there's just storylines plenty. And again, this is the last normal season, quote unquote, of college football before 2024 changes everything. So we got to enjoy this while we can. I'm hoping this is the craziest season of all time. I'm hoping this surpasses. 2007. I'm hoping this surpasses 1984. I'm I'm expecting the craziest season of all time. Please, you know, yeah, you can. I can throw my predictions. You know, throw them in the water for the craziest season of all time. We need this. We need the craziest season of all time. Give it to us. I'm ready. If you ain't ready, I don't know what's wrong with you. If you're ready for college football this week, boy. Boy, it's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. So I'll see y'all next Tuesday as far as college football goes. Tomorrow, we're going to talk some lacrosse. We're going to talk a lot of lacrosse, Man Cup, Minto Cup, PLL Playoffs, Founders Cup, President's Cup a little bit, you know, NLL, a whole lot of lacrosse. Then Thursday, Gonna talk a lot of NFL. Got a lot of things to say about the NFL, or at least I can try to say some things as you know we cut down the rosters to 53. And then Friday, I don't know what's gonna happen just yet. Just stick around, continue to sub, continue to like, continue to comment, continue to share. I've been sharing other people's content. Make sure you check out, you know, some of my Good buddies, content, you know, like this week in Arena Ball Pro Arena Talk, same, uh, Shady Sports Network, you know, uh, you know, we're, 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 there's a lot of things that I'm going to hold off on as far as the arena game goes for right now. So just wait a second on that. Wait another couple weeks, or rather wait another week or so on arena football stuff because I want to wait until everything is confirmed there. But are you excited? For week one of college football, I'll, I'll share it in a post. Just, you know, if you made it all the way to the end, are you excited for week one of college football? I'll ask it in a post too, but tell me. Tell me in the comment section. I'm, I'm being serious. I hope you stay to the end. If you didn't stay to the end, something's wrong with you. Big Boy Sports is signing out, and I will see you all tomorrow.